So let's think of a simple example first. Suppose I want to send a message to Alice. If I just want confidentiality, well, I can put that in an envelope, seal the envelope, and write that it's for Alice. And to make sure my seal is good, I'll make sure that no one else can open this. And I could give the message to Alice. Now, the problem is, if Bob is jealous, and the mere fact that I'm communicating with Alice would cause problems, well, I can't just hand the message to Alice. That would show that we're communicating. What I'm going to do instead is use Colleen. I'm going to give the message to Colleen and ask Colleen to give the message to Alice. So I will have a new envelope. I'll give this to Colleen. And what I'll put in that envelope is the message I want to give to Alice. And this also has a very secure seal. So no one else will open the message. And I give it to Colleen. If someone sees me giving a message to Colleen, well, there's no problem there. Colleen would open the message and see that it's got a message to give to Alice. And then she could give the message to Alice. So this works a little bit. And Colleen could open the message and give it to Alice. So how well does this scheme work? So the question is, which of these properties are necessary for the scheme that I just described to successfully hide the fact that I'm communicating with Alice? It requires complete trust in Colleen. It requires that Bob cannot see when I talk with Colleen. It requires that Bob must not be able to see when Colleen talks with Alice. It requires that Bob must not be able to see both communications, when I talk with Colleen and when Colleen talks with Alice.